Hello everybody and welcome to another Crochet with Chris. Um, this video is one of the, it's going to be the final video I think, in um, how to make this head hugger turban. It is found at headhuggers.org which link is down in the doobly-doo. If you are on my blog and you have no idea what I'm talking about in the doobly-doo then that means you know, it's a YouTube phrase, so uh, I'll put the links on my blog as well. Um, I do have permission to do a video tutorial of this hat. The tutorial is kind of a long one, but it does go stitch by stitch for this pattern, um, which is actually really nice. Um, if you are looking for a charitable project to work on, then if you're a crochet or a knitter or a sewer or whatever you do, I would highly suggest checking out the headhuggers.org. Um, I have some other videos out there that go through the various rows so if you have not watched those and you want to make this hat and you want to see the tutorial then I would say go back and watch these but for those of you who have gotten this far with the videos we are ready to start with row 8 which I'm only going to show you once and then you will repeat that through row 20 and then I will be coming back and we'll be putting this little pleat or the little gather there on the front and finishing our hat off. So with that said, let's uh, not dilly dally. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is row eight. Again, if you haven't watched the other videos and you need to, um, I would highly suggest just going back and starting from the beginning. Um, I've mentioned the seam before. You, I think I see the seam better if I turn it on its side. This is my seam. You can see that it is very straight. As long as you continue to finish in that little stitch that's hugged up next to the chain too, your seam should remain straight. Now, as we did in the last pattern, you were gonna, we're not increasing any rows for row 8 through 20. It's going to be 70 stitches flat every row and that's what's going to bring the hat up and give it a hat shape. So we don't want to increase any rows. We do not want to crochet in that same stitch as the chain 2. The chain 2 that you start the row with, you have every row, does count as a half double crochet. Because we are not increasing, see that little hole? We do not want to do our half double crochet in it. We're going to go to the next stitch, which is it seems way far out there, but it's not. So that gives us two. Actually, that does seem kind of out there. <laughs> so let's go ahead and count 70 around. It's three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, this is 25. So I want to say, you know, as you become more adept with the pattern or just crocheting in general, you're going to find you probably don't need to count off quite as strictly as I am here, but this is geared towards people who may be having trouble with the pattern. So it may seem a little slow, but I think counting is good right now. <laughs> so 26, 27, 
28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. We are now at the halfway mark. Give ourselves a nice little eyeball. Here to here. Looks halfway to me. <laughs> Keep going. 36. 37. 38. 39. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, <laughs> 20 more, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, <laughs> 58, 59, 60. I have trouble with my pattern because I want to pull it up higher and I can't. <laughs> i got to remember to keep it down. All right, we're almost there. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. All right, yay. <laughs> I was a little worried. 69. Then that last stitch, just to make sure that you know where you're putting it to keep that seam straight. See that chain two? There's one that just makes like a L shape. I got it right here pinched between my nails. See it in there? There's the chain two. See that down there hidden? That's where you want your last stitch to go. And that's going to help keep that seam good and straight. So let's uh, do the thumb thing, put your hook in, slip stitch to join. All right, now you finished row eight. Now I want to suggest, especially to someone new, even I do it, I have a piece of paper and I finished row eight and I check it off when I'm done. And then I know when I get all the rows that I need done that I'm ready to start wrapping up my pattern. So uh, I'm going to leave you with that. When I come back here, I will have completed 20 rows. Well, I'll be completing 9 to 20 because I just finished row 8 here. Remember, you're not increasing. Remember to count your chain 2 as a half double crochet. So that is 1. Do not crochet for this row into that hole where the chain 2 is. You'll be crocheting into the next stitch. There does seem to be, it appears like there's a bigger gap, but it's really not going to show it, but it's going to help keep that seam nice and straight. So uh, if you crochet in here, if you want to get rid of this gap, the problem that you're going to have is you're going to end here. And that means this stitch here isn't going to be used. And then your seam's going to start going off 
like that. It's going to be kind of C-shaped. So just keep that in mind when you're working through this, and I will see you back here after row 20. All right, we're ready to, uh, f oh, got a little blurry there. We are ready to finish off our hat. As you can see, I finished rows 8 through 20, which is actually a pretty good chunk here, um, where we stopped increasing and just came down. So the cap itself is done. I must admit, um, I am a little bit tempted to put an edging of some sort on this hat, but that's just my personal. I do not want to deviate from the original pattern too much. So we're ready to, to uh, tie it off. I did want to point out, if you can see the seam, it is a very straight seam. If you do not finish in that one stitch, which is the one, I'll show you the one right before, because this is where the chain two would come from. So if you don't finish in this chain right here, your seam will, or it'll C curve off so it won't be straight. But if you uh, finish correctly, then your seam should just line up rather nicely. I know I had kind of a conniption with having the bigger space there, but in all reality, all is well. Sometimes you just need to trust the pattern. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, let me get my trusty scissors here, and we're going to cut the cord. And the pattern itself says use the same thread to weave through, but you have to start up at the top, so it never tells you to tie off, but uh, it almost makes sense that you would. And I also don't think I would want the seam running down the front of the hat, so I'm going to go ahead and see the tail. I tied it off. I'm going to take my tapestry needle here thread it through. And I'm going to weave this tail in. I am going to be careful and uh, try to keep it as close to that seam as possible. I don't want my threads to show. Weaving in the ends I think is very different for a lot of people how they do it. I tend to move up and down within an inch and go between a couple different rows to kind of, you know, wiggle that thread around. I just crossed over and now I'm coming back. But at some point during weaving my ends in, I want to try to pass the thread through itself. So it kind of locks in. And then once I get it nice and secure, my camera keeps going. I had to use a different camera than my high def because the high def battery doesn't last as long. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to tighten my, my starting tail. I'm going to do the same thing. Thread that onto my tapestry needle. Now for this one, uh, whenever I go around a circle, I just keep going in the circle. I don't, I don't ever leave the circle, but I do go around it a few times just to make sure that I have it nice and secure. I will switch directions, but I never leave the circle. When you start crocheting and you really get into it, you're going to find that uh, there are certain things that you just start doing because they're easier for you or they're your personal trend, what you are most likely to do in certain situations. Now I've got to say I prefer the inside because as you start crocheting it will bevel outward. I actually prefer the stitches on the inside for this pattern so I'm going to flip it inside out. And now opposite of my seam. Get my hat up here. I don't want, I want that seam in the back. I do not want it in the front. It's going to be right about here. I'm going to take a little bit of this yarn here. I didn't have enough of a tail left or I would have used it. Oh, cut that. 
basically we're going to weave a U shape. We're going to come down, turn around and go back up and then we're going to pull that to make the um, pucker in the front. So set about four inches up. So I took it to be right around where that eighth row started. And then I just weave my needle in and out of the half double crochets. And when you pull it, make sure you leave a little bit of a tail that you can get your hands on and that you can weave in. You don't want to get one that you can't weave in. Do that. Then I'm going to hop across one stitch and start coming up. And I'm going to go right along where I just did it. So you got to kind of pay attention to your threads there. And uh, coming up next to it, probably about a quarter inch away. It doesn't give anything specific in the pattern, so I think it's personal preference. Maybe through trial and error, I don't know. I just kind of know what I like. Now that I have that weaved in, now holding it securely, you just don't want to yank and have things going all over the place. I'm going to pull my two threads together, kind of like blinds. Get them up there nice and snug. Looking for that V shape. And then I'm going to take and tie these together, pulling firmly. Not too firm that you break the yarn though. I've done that doing patterns too. Oops. Then you're all angry. <laughs> Alright, so I have a pretty good pucker here. And now, where'd my tapestry needle go? I lost it. Ugh, I lose stuff like that all the time. I have another one. I'll just use it. Using a tapestry needle. Oh, it's under my hook. going to thread these on and I'm going to weave these tails in. Make sure they're good and secure. Uh, I wanted to make this tutorial as true to the pattern as possible, but I've got to say, aside from adding a, uh, uh, an edging, I would love to add a nice little ruffled edging just to kind of feminine it up a little bit, more so than it already is. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, came through earlier and she saw the one that I have on the dummy and she tried it on and she loved it and she wanted it. <laughs> and she's like, Mom, do you think you can make me one in pink? And I'm like, yeah, I can make you one in pink. And then I got to thinking, wouldn't it just be adorable to do a flower over the pucker, but for her I think I'm going to do a flower, but then like a really colorful button, because if she wants a pink hat, then I could do maybe a orange flower, maybe trimmed in red, with a big blue button or something in the center. I thought that that just might be adorable. Now I have on hand a lot of tapestry needles, so I'm going to leave this one threaded, and I'm going to thread the second tail up here from one, the thread that I used to pull to make the pucker. And I'm going to sew this through a few times as well. But what I want to do on this one, I'm going to try to end on the bottom. Come up next to the other one and tie them together. Do like another knot just on the bottom side. So it doesn't really tell you how, other than you know you want it to be secure. You want it to go through the laundry and not fall apart. And honestly, I think when I crochet, that is probably my biggest fear. I'm going to put all this time and effort into a project and I'm going to wash it and it's going to fall apart. <laughs> so I am very tedious with my ends. And I don't think that that's a bad thing, but at the same time, I'm, you have to reach a level of confidence in your work to know that it's not just going to fall apart at the drop of a hat. Ha, huh, get it, hat. And I, 
even after, gosh, pretty much 30 years of crocheting, I don't think I've achieved that level. And I don't know why. I mean, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I can, I just get really secure with my tails. That's all. All right, we're done. The hat is complete. So let me come up here, take that one off my dummy. My little styrofoam head. That is an awesome purchase, just so you know. I'm going to put this one on. And I'll come up here with the camera so you can see her. She's done. There's a little pucker. Got a little crazy on there. I think I pulled just that side a little too much. You can always repucker it. There we go. And there's my seam down the back. You can see it's actually a pretty straight seam. So that's what you're looking for. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I desperately hope that uh, you are able to create this pattern and then uh, if you are wanting to donate them you can again go to headhuggers.org which is linked down there or in my blog depending on where you're watching this from and uh, has information there on how you can do hats for their cause. Thank you again and happy crocheting!